Okay. Hi folks, I know it's been a while. I've been on the road delivering horses and teaching on the way to and from, so you might want to keep that in mind. And Deb will kind of let you know what part of the country I'm in. I've got to make a run up to Portland, and then I'm going to Tennessee. So if you want a lesson or a one-day clinic, get a hold of Deb. And if I got time, I'll be there. If I don't, I'll let you know. But here's something that comes up a lot. And uh, we've been at this long enough now where I need, I'm going to address it. And I hope it makes sense to you. There's a whole lot of horses, western riding horses, that are rode in a snaffle bit. Okay, now we've gone through a whole year of videos and people kind of understand how to transition into a western bit. All right, some people want the slicer and some people want the silver. Doesn't matter, they both do the, exactly the same thing. All right, what happens to me is that we get these horses out of Mexico and they're anywhere from young horses up to 15 years old. They've been rode a million miles. Okay, if I had to ride the river, I'd pick a vaquero any day of the week. But the fact is, I got to put more of a handle on them when they get here. So I figured out a way to do it. And uh, you can call it anything you want. But what I'm going to do is just share with you how we do it. Now, it has to be done in sequences. And this doesn't take days. It only takes hours. And the very first thing, I'm going to use the example of a, a, a cowboy that works on a ranch. He gets a string of horses. And in the West, a lot of ranches, we just use a snaffle bit because we just got to keep our feet off the ground. Well, what that means is after 25 cowboys, you got a horse that just rides around the snaffle, okay? The word collection has never been introduced to the horse. So if I want to take a horse, and the reason I'm talking about this is that a couple guys got a hold of us and said, when we get to the corral with the cattle, we got to put our snaffles back on to work the cattle and we can't do it in our in our bridles. Well, there's two sides of that story. As one of them is you missed the boat earlier on, but in your defense, you might have hired on and you got some cold jawed horse. So you go outside and make your circle in a bridle to lighten them up and work on them. And then you got to put the snaffle on when you get back. So there's two things you got to know. The first one is, is you have to have some level of collection on your horse. So you're not going to get any lateral work done. Not with any kind of dignity. So Deb's going to do the collection, which turns into self-carriage. And then she's going to show you some lateral work. And then I'm going to show you some lateral work. And I'll show you how I do it. But the first thing you got to get taken care of is a horse to walk backwards and you can hear the cricket, which means they've been defending their mouth against that snaffle forever. And now with either our snaffle or MLS snaffle or else a bit, when they walk backwards and you hear the cricket, that means they went ahead and said, okay, I can relax my tongue. I don't have to defend my mouth. Two things happen. A, they relax their tongue and B, they start to get collection on them. So Deb, why don't you go ahead and line up over there and, and just walk your horse forward, stop it and back it up. Now, I've done horses on the East Coast, warm blood horses that are just as cold jawed as an anvil. And it, what she's about to do, I've never had to walk backwards more than 10 times because the dressage world, they don't walk backwards. So if you watch this horse and you watch Deb's hand, it's flat. Now, she's going to not allow her hand to go past the saddle horn. If you do, you're going to get yourself in trouble. This is a young horse. He's not even five. There. That's kind of the concept. You see the horse bridle up and he's bending at the ankle so he's not dragging his front feet, which means he's not heavy on the forehand. So you can appreciate that if your horse is dragging the front feet making rows to plant corn in, you're not going to get any lateral work of any kind of quality. So the goal is she tightens her quad muscles from her knee up on both legs. That takes your legs off. She puts a dish in her spine and leans back a half an inch. When she starts to walk backwards, she just simply exhales and puts pressure on the bit. As soon as the feet move, she takes her hand off. Now what you're witnessing is that horse connecting her hand to his feet. 90% of his brain is focused on his mouth right now. So she's going to change that. And they, they connect the dots pretty quick. You got to give a horse a little credit. 
Now the best part of training the horse is what she just did. That's when you stop and let him relax. Now as you pick up the rein, everything happens at once. The skeleton and you exhale and yield. Now if you watch, you're going to see this horse make an intentional step. If you'll also watch, he's all focused on his mouth. So he's mechanically moving backwards. That's as far as you go. It's not just a curl, but I don't I never go farther than that walking backwards. Now if you're doing this at home and you're in an arena, Every time you walk forward, move over about three feet and you can watch your tracks on the ground and know whether your horse is dragging his feet or not. Now what this is, you guys, it, you can use the word cutting corners, cheating, whatever you want, but you can't, I cannot hold a Ramal rein and do what Deb's doing because I can't hold a Ramal rein with a flat hand because it comes to a V, it's closed. That's why the western bit, it's not a spade, that's why the western bit and the split reins. Now, I will sh in the lateral work, I'll show you why the split reins again. Now, Deb, this time just stop dead, freeze with your hand, now put your skeleton in the right position. Now sh close your fist. Now just hold, exhale. Now there's a term called loading up, and that's when you feel the skeleton load up, getting prepared to walk backwards. There it is. Okay, please understand that the horse tried its options, and then said, oh yeah, backwards. As soon as it went backwards, she pitched the rein. Now remember, there's pitching the rein, which is what she did, and then there's a release, which is a half an inch. If you throw the reins away every time, you teach a horse to just bob its head up and down. Now, remember I said close your hand. If you do it with an open hand, you don't send the right signal. There, that's, an that's a horse intentionally walking backwards. Now, Deb, you're done. We talked about that this morning. I don't get perfection, but what I've got is a horse that has the concept now. So by the time you've loaded 10 trucks or sorted 500 cows, they're like, fine, I got it. And I'm sorry, but we have an advantage working cattle because it gives the horse something else to look at. A horse can only go in circles so many times and they're kind of thinking of other things. All right, so now, moving right along, she's going to pick up the rein and simply ask the hindquarter to step over by leaning over the dash and putting her left foot back and move the hip over. Now this horse is thinking. You can watch the horse. You see how the cricket stopped? So now you tell the horse, here it comes. Boom. That's disengaging the hindquarter. Now remember, this is all about a guy riding to the corral and thinking he has to put his snaffle on. What I'm showing you is if you get this foundation going, you can leave your bridle on. Now if you're a crash and burn 35 mile an hour guy working in a corral, then Forget everything I'm telling you because there's no way it's going to work. It doesn't work that way. If you're a quiet crew and you're smooth, this is what will help you. Now, Deb, this time as you pick up to say excuse me, which is a polite way to contact a horse, I want you to just do it all one motion, put your right leg back and move the hip back over. That's it. So now you've disengaged the hindquarter. Anybody that works cattle in an alleyway knows that if you can't disengage the hindquarter, you're going to do a terrible job sorting cows and calves and or yearlings. Doesn't matter. All right, now I'd like you to just side past the horse to your right. Now her left seat bone goes down. She looks to the right. Her left toe goes out and her leg is where it's hanging. And you see how the horse is throwing its head? Don't worry about it. It's, it's confused right now. That's all this is, that's all you're watching. Now just stay with it till the horse yields. Stay with there. See how the horse moved its hip over? Okay, this isn't a beauty contest. This is getting a horse to understand what you're after. 
So now she's asking again. You need to yield. Thank you. Now please understand you guys. Deb, I want you to get a long range and hold your hand up in the air. That, now turn your fist towards the camera. That's what your hand looks like holding the reins. Now do this one. That is how you hold a Ramal rein and you can't help the horse as much as you can with a flat hand. That's why the split rein. Okay. I know when there's a lot of places in the country where I'd go straight to Buckaroo Hell for doing what I do, but I don't care. I'm trying to get a horse that's older to handle laterally and have some level of collection. That's what this is about. So now I'd like you to side pass to your left. How well can you present yourself to have the horse understand? Please, there, now stop. Stop. Let the horse know. Don't get greedy. Please understand that when you set the rein down like Deb just did, that's how you actually train a horse. It's the timeline of when you set the rein down and give the horse a chance to swallow what you just showed him. That's training because the horse is sorting it out. You watch the ears and they're going to alternate and move around. The horse is like, okay, what else? They start thinking of something else, see? Now, Deb, I want you to place your hand on the withers and stop that cricket. This is a little test you can do while you're waiting on a truck. The object is to breathe everything out of your body until the cricket stops. Because this is kind of a nervous type horse. Hear it slowing down? Good, let go. This is just something to do while you're waiting on the truck instead of pitching pennies. Now, what we've done is started the lateral work, disengaged the hindquarter and got side passing. All right, I'm going to do the forehand, so thank you. Okay, folks, now we're going to move on to turning, on bringing the front end one way or the other, which if you can't get that done in the crowd, you're in trouble. And that's why the dilemma of the cowboys that got a hold of us, that's what they're talking about. Okay, what I'm showing you is not traditional. Too bad. What I'm showing you is real. So you get an older horse and you need to get things going and you want to end up riding one-handed because you're going to have to rope and oh, by the way, you ride western. So the way to transition them to a bit is what I'm showing you. And um, there's not, you don't have to go to group or anything. You just do what I'm telling you. And when I did three-day clinics, I would show up at a clinic on a Friday, and I'm thinking to my friend Curtis back in Virginia. He'd done all his homework in the snaffle, done it all. He had everything going on. All I did was show up, watch him, get on his horse, ride at five minutes, and say, go get a half-breed. Put it on there, put it in one hand like this, and rode the horse, and he's done. He's never looked at a snaffle since. So the foundation was already there. It's not like I put it on him. Well, I'm going to show you now. Here is center. These are equal reins. Here is off center. Now I have a tight right rein and a loose left rein. That would be a right hand turn. Here's center, off, one fist, tight left rein, loose right rein. Now cut that in half and that's about what this horse takes. So we've already got the horse bridling up. That's the first one. He's not as far along as Deb's, but there again, you're not going to a futurity. Just get it started, and I'll guarantee if you if you present yourself well, it'll all fall into place by the time the last truck leaves. So what you do is you walk in a circle. Now I'm even. You can take your wrist and bend it like this. Call it neck rein, and I don't care what you call it. The idea is to get the horse to bend its neck. I got my hand low where it belongs and I'm just simply tucking that left rein. I'm looking to the inside, my left leg is pushing the rib out, my right leg is impulsion to keep the horse moving. I cannot make a left turn unless I can see the eyeball of my horse. Not round, bump, release, bump, release, bump, and pull straight back. Put your leg on and the horse steps over. That's how it starts. Now the part that I need you to know is that when I was going left, I said, pull.
pull straight back. Because your reins are uneven, the left rein gave the direction already, and when the right rein comes tight, it shifts the weight to the hindquarter. That's how this works. That's how it works. I'm going to go to the right. Now here's the hook. If you hang on this rein and don't give it back and you're a dink, hook the bridle under the tail. There's no point in doing this. So I bump and I release. I bump and I release. You'll learn to walk in a circle off your leg when you get them broke. There's a bend in the neck. That's what I want. Giving it back. Giving it back. Now watch. I pull straight back. Put my left foot on and bring the front end over. Okay. If you in your armchair said, oh, he threw his head up. Well, I'm not going to can him because of it. I'm just going to keep working him. And what he will do is get really good and smooth when he figures out he doesn't have to fight it. To help a horse make a left hand turn, if you will open your shoulder, and now watch, this is opening my shoulder. When I do this, it drives my right seat bone down and puts my right leg on and takes my left leg off. So if you take the rein and you've got your math done and you open this shoulder, grab the saddle horn if it helps you get stable. You bump, you open, and then you put your foot on, pull straight back, and the horse will reach. That's how you bring the front end across. Open the right shoulder. And when you open your shoulder, I say open. Open your shoulder. It'll take your hand and your rein with it. So now you say, excuse me, this rein is shorter. You pull straight back, which puts the outside rein tight, shifts the weight, and the horse goes that way. Now, if you're like me, You'll rerun this video like 75 times. Well, who cares? It's not like you're going anywhere. And there again, I don't care. Tradition is if I'd have owned this horse since the day it was born and I took it all the way to spade. That's tradition. Well, that ain't what happens. I've never been on a ranch where they hand me a string of bridle horses. They hand you a bunch of cold jawed, hard, tough horses because they're used to go get cattle. You're not paid to train horses. This is how you cut the corner. I don't care what word you use. This is what will help you get your cattle work done so you're not standing there holding the gate all day or got a stick in your hand. And it'll help you stay horseback. And by the way, you're not pulling on your horse's mouth like your jihan them with a snaffle. That's why I wanted to make this video. Now, for those of you that are not drawing wages on the big outfit, it's the exact same story. If you're a backyard person and you want to ride a western bit, this is one way to help you transition for older horses. Never ever in my life would you see any of this video on a colt. Now, if you look around, we're in a different country. And as they say in Sweden, we've had an invasion. We call it invasion, but anyway, there's a couple cows out here that belong to a neighbor. And he's stealing grass, so once again, we've got to go find them and uh, put them back where they come from. And uh, this, for those of you that are curious about this cowboy stuff, this is what's called a trap. Now, a trap, when I lived in Montana, we had a beef trap. We put steers in there to hold them until the trucks got there. The trap itself was 2,000 acres, bigger than most people's ranches. So it held several thousand cattle. Anyway, this little corral here is what you'd come into, and then you got a alleyway over there on, and that's where you can either unload a loading chute for a semi, or you can just back a gooseneck up and load out of here. That's the way the corrals are pretty much set up in the West. So for those of you that are curious about the Western deal, this is just about as Western as it gets. Just a note to talk about, if you do ride a snaffle bit on a horse and you're working a colt in the corrals, I've watched it for years, and my bride just mentioned it. What happens is people get on a snaffle bit colt and they're trying to outwork a cow, 
And the cow is making an absolute fool out of them because a human cannot be as quick as a cow is. And if you've got genetics in your horse, you probably should stay out of his way. But if you're sitting there trying to work a cow, what humans tend to do is they, it's interesting. It's like ducking your head in a parking garage. You're not gonna hit anything, but they lean over the front of the saddle and they start to pull like this. Now watch where my feet go. Now they're completely out of position and if you're pus gutted, you just put 300 pounds on the front end of your horse and you expect him to be handy? You need to get out of their way. You've got to be a centered rider. That's something to think about on a colt. All right, and I just want to share with you something about big outfits. One of the biggest gathers I was ever in on because I, just who I am, but I was in, we, yeah, we were throwing together about 2,000 head of steers. And we had to go probably, I don't know, all day to get back to the corrals. Well, these steers had enough ear on them where they were a little twitchy. And um, why, I'll never know, but they actually stampeded just like in the Western movies. So automatically, cowboys, they start thinking down country, where in the hell can I ride to to bend them? So that means you're going to leave at an angle and hope that they go that same way. But one of the guys on the crew, he was kind of new and... Uh, he uh, automatically took his rope down. He was making a loop. And we're all leaving the country, and he's alongside us making this loop. And the cow boss, he looks over and he says, what are you doing? And he says, well, hell, we got to bend him. He says, what are you going to do, rope him? <laughs> so you want to hear a story? That was the story. Cowboy humor. He's got his loop. That's funny. <laughs> all right.